Hello everyone, my name is Aston, and today I'm going to show you how to use a compressor in Pro Tools. So first let's ask ourselves what a compressor does. I have this clip of myself playing guitar right here, and as you can see, there are some very high peaks throughout, and there are some quieter bits as well. What a compressor is going to do is it's going to take these really loud parts and quiet them down a bit, and it's going to take these lower parts and raise them up. The goal here is to make a consistent sound throughout. Now, if you're working with music, voiceovers, video games, YouTube videos, whatever it is, and you're working with audio, you are definitely going to need a compressor and run across it. And that's why I've made this video here for you today, so that you know what you're doing when you go into this process. So opening up our compressor today, we see a bunch of things on the screen. On the left, we see our levels. Next to that is the options, which is empty right now. On the right is the sidechain, which this video is not about. We are not doing that today. And on the bottom, we have our six dials, which we will be using to control our compressor. In the middle, you'll see the graphical representation, which will be really helpful to us later. Before we continue, I want to point out the presets that we have on this compressor. If we pull down this drop-down menu over here, we'll see presets for acoustic guitar, drums, vocals, and if we click on one of these, it'll change all of our settings and it'll change the graph as well. Now these presets, they're great for a starting point, but they're really bad to end up on. If you just select the vocal leveler and say it's done, it's probably not. Every piece of audio is different, so you start with this and you make adjustments as needed and then you finish it off. But the only way to really do that is to dive in and really know what each thing does, and that's why we're going to start from scratch with Factory Default right here. Now the first thing I'm going to point out is on this little graph right here, you see that orange or yellow line on it. And that is the point where the compressor says that something is loud. You remember how I said the point of a compressor is to take things that are loud and turn them down? Well, that is the point where this compressor says that things are loud, and it's dictated here by this little orange knob. If I move this, it moves that orange line along with it. So, okay, everything that passes that orange line is going to get turned down, but by how much? And that's what the ratio is for right here. So you see how the white line, it gets sloped off at an angle after this orange line right here. The angle of that slope is dictated by this ratio knob over here. So if I adjust this knob, I can make a more intense ratio or not a ratio at all. If I have it at 1 to 1, then it's basically not functioning. If I return the ratio to its original setting, it's at 3 to 1. That means that every bit of audio that goes past this orange line gets reduced by a factor of 3 to 1. So for every 3 decibels that approaches this threshold, only one of them is getting past it. So once it hits that orange line, it knows that it needs to bring the signal down by a specified amount by the ratio. The attack is how fast it brings that down. The default setting right now is at 10 milliseconds. I can bring that to a quicker setting at about one millisecond, and that means that it'll only take one millisecond for the signal to go to its maximum point to its lowest compressed point. If you compress it very fast, like if you bring this all the way down to way down here, it is going to go down so fast and you are very easily going to tell that something is wrong, especially with something like human speech. The goal of a compressor is to make your processing transparent. You want it to sound better, but you don't want it to sound like you actually did anything to it. For the purposes of our guitar, we're going to bring the attack down just a little bit. To about 5 milliseconds. The signal does not always stay above this loudness threshold. When it dips back down below it, you need to tell the compressor how fast to bring that signal back to where it was before. If you make the release too slow, then the signal's not going to get back to normal fast enough before the next sound hits the threshold and needs to be compressed again. For our purposes, we're going to leave the release where it is right now. I think it's just fine. Now, looking at what we've done so far, if I were to bypass this whole plugin, you wouldn't really be able to hear much of a difference between the before and the after. All you might be able to say is that it sounds a bit quieter, but that's about it. And yes, that is half of what a compressor does, but now it's time to focus on the other half, making the quiet parts louder. And that's what this gain knob over here is for. So right now it's set to zero. And what we're going to do is we're going to raise that up and we're going to look at the white line in the visualizer. And we'll see that as it goes up, the entire white line goes up with it. So what this is doing is it's raising the input value. It's the only thing that's affecting the signal on the left side of the threshold. If we bring this up to about five decibels, 
4.7 works, and then we play it, we'll see that the whole track sounds a bit more consistent throughout. If we bypass it, it sounds definitely different than it does after the compressor with the gain put on. The thing is though, after raising my input gain, it's going to affect what is being compressed after the fact. So what you're going to find sometimes is that you're going to want to hit the compressor a bit harder after you've raised the gain a bit. So for instance, I'm going to raise the ratio to about 5 to 1 instead. That means for every 5 decibels that's hitting this threshold, only one is going to escape. I'm also going to raise the threshold a bit to about minus 20 decibels. With our new settings, let's listen in. Not my best performance, but it does sound better. Lastly for today, we're going to look at the knee. Now the knee is the most minute of all of the adjustments in the compressor. The best way to explain it is just to turn it up and you'll see what happens in the visualizer. When I turn it up, it softens out. If I turn it up all the way, it becomes a slight curve instead of a jagged angle like that. In most situations, you're not going to need the knee. For our purposes right now, I will use it a little bit just to show you how it sounds like. You're probably not going to notice anything different between this and this. It's very minute adjustments that don't really affect too much. But as you're mixing, if you're listening to your vocals or your guitars or whatever it is that you're putting a compressor on and you're thinking, man, I can really hear that compressor kick in, this will soften the blow a little bit and blur the lines between what is compressed and what is uncompressed. Because as you can see, because of this knee, it now means that stuff that is slightly before this threshold is also being compressed slightly. It's not as black and white as just saying, okay, if it crosses this, it's being compressed. If it's not, well, then it's not. It's the most finicky part of any compressor, and the only way to really get good at it and to know when you need to use it is to just try it and see when it works. I'm going to give myself a slight knee of two decibels. And one trick I'm going to show you is if you double click on here, you can actually just type in what you want if you know exactly the value that you want. That won't do much, but hey, it might help it out a little bit. With that, we have all of our settings dialed in, and let's listen to the final product. First, we're going to start with the plugin bypassed so that none of these settings affect anything. Sounds kind of quiet, but the peaks sound pretty loud. But then when we hit the bypass button, sounds a lot better in my opinion. It's louder, but the loudest parts before don't hit quite as hard. And with that, I'm going to end the video right here. Thank you guys for watching so much. My name is Aston once again. There are some related videos on screen right now. If you liked this video, hit the like button down below and subscribe if you'd like to see more in the future. See you next time.